Welcome back, everybody. Stay tuned for the end of this video because we have Joe Rogan talking to a guest about the banking system. Nothing but a house of cards. All right, we got crypto news. Let's get into it. So what's causing this excitement? Well, buckle up because key financial players like BlackRock Inc. and NASDAQ have been in talks with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. What's on the table? The listing of spot Bitcoin ETFs. This could be a game changer for the entire crypto space. BlackRock and NASDAQ have been in talks Sunday evening with the SEC. Hmm. But that's not all. Tether holders have been on a shopping spree, accumulating an extra $1.67 billion over the past six months. And you know what that means in the crypto world? Whale activity. Historically, this kind of movement precedes price increases for Bitcoin. If these trends continue, we might be in for some serious upward momentum. Now let's talk numbers. Glassnode recently released a report on the market shift. According to the November 20th, 23 report, a whopping 83.6% of the Bitcoin supply is in profit. That's the highest level since November 2021. The anticipation of institutional money pouring in after the approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs is driving this surge. And mark your calendars. The SEC's next deadline is January 1st, 2024. But wait, there's more excitement on the horizon. Blur is making headlines, surging by a massive 68.8% in the week ending November 26th. The news of Binance listing Blur contributed to a breakout last Friday. And it's not just the listings. Rewards are putting Blur on the map. One lucky NFT trader received a staggering 22.8 million Blur from the Blur.io Season 2 drop, creating a frenzy for Season 3. And here's what makes Blur stand out. On November 21st, Blur announced that 50% of Season 3 rewards will go to NFT traders via Blur points. Traders earn points for bidding, listing, and lending on NFTs. Blur is just not another coin. It's a complete ecosystem with its own NFT marketplace for pro traders, backed by Paradigm. Well, there you have it, folks. A quick little update of the crypto universe. Exciting times ahead, especially with the potential approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs and Blur's unique approach to rewards. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more crypto updates, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is the Crypto Realm. Play hard, trade smart. But so you you could walk into the bank tomorrow and your checking you know account balances whatever say it's five thousand dollars and you could go I'd like to take out two thousand dollars and they can say no you can't have it now yeah. they owe it to you technically but they don't have to give it to you they're not just holding it for you to give to you on demand now the system hasn't collapsed so they will give that to you today if you walk into a bank but when but if you, too many people come in and they want too much money well they don't have it. Yeah. Is the point. So when you open a bank account, and I don't know exactly what the reserve rates are now, because I know they did change this during COVID, but for a while it was 10% um, was the what the Federal Reserve set as the reserves uh, that you had to put away. So when you come into your bank and you give them $100 to open a checking account, just to make it an easy number, they, they hold $10 and they loan out $90. And now, so they, they'll they loan that money out. And so essentially they owe you a hundred dollars, but the, the effect of this, right, is that now there's this, this guy. So let's say you open the account with a hundred dollars. Now there's another guy who takes out a loan for $90 and you're now in the economy and kind of like you think you have a hundred dollars and he thinks he has $90, but really there's only, there's not $190. There's only a hundred dollars. That you, you get what right. I'm saying? But now here's where it gets even crazier than that. This guy doesn't just hold his $90. He goes and puts it in the bank. And so the bank holds 10% of that money and then loans out 90% of that to somebody else who then puts that money in the bank. And then they take 10%. Of, so when you actually look at the effect of it, there's like not nearly as much money in the bank as we all think we have in the world. So... Essentially, if everybody came into the bank or even just too many people came into the bank and said, we'd like to withdraw our money, there's nowhere near enough money for them to give you. So inherently, the whole thing is kind of a house of cards. It's like when you're going to a stadium and you try to use your cell phone, you realize there's no signal. 
even mm. though you have five bars. Right. Because everyone's using their phone. Mm -hmm. So there's no signal for you. You right. can't get online. You can't make a phone call. Th right. Like this thing only works if we're not all trying to do it at the same time. Exactly. But if we do, yeah. then we're in a lot of trouble.